Okay, so let's continue. This is Proverbs 25 and 28. Like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self-control. Which, this is the reason why Yahweh says that he's going to be the fire within and he's going to be the wall around his people. Because the majority of our people, you see, they're hot-headed. This is the reason why, you know, I would love to work with everybody. You know, it's a blessing to see other so-called Hispanic brothers who are worshiping Yahweh only. You understand? And when I say that, it's not because, you know, I'm being biased or anything like that. I'm just trying to say that as me, being a so-called Hispanic brother myself. But everybody joined this truth a different way. The way that I know about the Most High Yahweh was through a Hebrew Israelite camp, okay? Not everybody has to go through that. Not everybody went through that. But my whole thing is that Yahweh says he's going to raise up the tents of Yahweh the first. So in my personal experience, I have not, you know, been around so-called Hispanics who worship Yahweh only. You understand that? There were, the majority of the people that I've been around were so-called African Americans, West Indians. Okay, a couple of Hispanics when I was in the Hebrew Israelite camps that were, you know, part of what they were doing there. But furthermore, all this is new now. You understand? And so, the Most High Yahweh, He's bringing us together. He's bringing the tribes of Apoyim with the tribes of Yahweh. The, that is the prophecy in Ezekiel. The two sticks becoming one. And we have to work together. You understand? This is why I'm trying to make this video without offending anybody in no way. Because I don't want nobody thinking that I'm taking one side over the other. I love both sides of my people. So you understand that? I love the other nations as well. And that is the God on his truth. So this is why I'm trying to do the best I can through the spirit of Yahweh to try to maintain this peace. But I am not the Most High. The Most High is the only one that's going to maintain the peace within us if you change yourself. You understand? I can't change you. You can only change yourself. So I would love to work with everybody because this is what the Most High Yahweh is doing now. Okay? The Most High Yahweh is gathering our people. We are going to be a light to the other nations. How are we supposed to, you know, explain the word of the Most High to the other nations if you're so quick to attack somebody? This is why the Most High Yahweh says that they have become like roaring lions, okay? They're attacking their prey. And this happened before. I haven't witnessed it in the past. You know, we tried to explain to other nations and I've seen brothers and sisters attacking them. And I'm not naming anybody specifically. I'm just saying in the past, my past experience throughout my journey of understanding the truth of the Most High Yahweh. Even when I was in a Hebrew Israelite camp, for you already know that, you know, they were doing a lot of wicked things there, so I've seen all this. It's hard for our people to try to talk to somebody and reason with them without them being aggressive. So that's why the Most High, He's trying to get our people out of this mindset, this 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 spirit of always wanting to be violent and attack your enemies and attack your neighbors and attack anybody out there for the most high Yahweh says do not repay evil to someone who do evil to you so if somebody's calling you uh you know derogatory word okay which we're not going to say that here whatever word it may be and you know you're offended by it again we are the children of Yahweh. We're supposed to look past that. We know that these people are beneath us. These racist people are beneath us, and that's the truth. I'm not saying anybody of a specific skin color or racist are beneath us. We are above that. Our mindset is above that. Being racist consists of having a low IQ, okay? And it's not about being smart or things like that, but in this mindset that the Most High was giving us, you cannot be racist. You cannot continue to hold on to whatever grudge that you have towards somebody that has a different skin color than you. And so I don't want to get too caught up speaking and ranting. Let's go ahead and continue with the scriptures. Proverbs 25 and 28 again. Like a city whose walls are broken through, it's a person who lacks self-control. You see that? Self-control, this is what it's all about. Yahweh teaches us this once you get your mind right. Isaiah 28 and 8. All the tables are covered with vomit, and there is not a spot without filth. Why? Because they have eaten too much honey. Another thing is too, I'll show you this through the spirit of Yahweh. Like it says in Proverbs 26 and 11, As a dog returns to its vomit, so fools repeat their folly. You see that? I just recently shared on Facebook 
and I don't have it up on here now, but it's a quote that says, until you change your mind, you will continue to repeat your experiences. So you have to remember that the Most High Yahweh, he's trying to get our people out of the waterless pits, repeating the same nonsense and garbage that you have been saying for the past 10 years, not learning anything new. That's a dry tree right there. Yahweh says that you're supposed to produce fruit. Why can't you understand the parable words of the Most High? That's the fruit of the wisdom. And I am specifically talking to all of these people who cannot get out of that mentality, you know, that racist mentality. This mentality that, oh, no, only these people are Yasharalites and not them. So this is why we're going to read this. This is why I am doing this video through the spirit of the Most High Yahweh. And it's not for anybody to take it offensive. Because Yahweh says, they take the word of Yahweh offensive nowadays. Isaiah 9 and 8 says, Yahweh has sent a message against Jacob. These are Yahweh's words. It will fall on Yasharal. All the people will know it. Aparium and the inhabitants of Samaria who say with pride and arrogance of heart the bricks have fallen down but we will rebuild with dressed stones the fig trees have been felled but we will replace them with cedars and so what I'm gonna tell you I'm not gonna candy coat it okay because again I don't want to say certain things to offend somebody but at the same time if I don't let you know how it is I'm not gonna say it the way that it should be said and so there are Yasharalites, specifically the Yasharalites from the house of Apoyim, who consider themselves to only be Yasharalites, and they do not consider their dark-skinned brothers to be Yasharalites. Now, that is the mountain of Samaria, as we talked about in a previous video. You can come off of that mountain, you can be part of Mount Zion one. This is the whole purpose of it. This is why Yahweh says that he's trying to get our people out of these mindset because you have to be part of this. It's not that I'm making this video trying to shun you away, you know, trying to call you out because I'm not doing that. I am doing this so that you may know through the scriptures of Yahweh that I'm going to show you this through his spirit. And this is what he says, that you have to come out of this mindset. This is part of his commands. You talk about following the commands, this is his command. So look what it says. The bricks have fallen. What is this talking about? This is talking about the original Mount of Samaria, which we're going to talk about that. Okay, the original Mount of Samaria was basically named Samaria after King Omri, if I'm not mistaken. But we'll talk about that. Now let's read Isaiah chapter 1, verse 17. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us settle the matter. You see the whole context of this chapter is meaningless offerings and that is what our people are giving to the Most High. So Yahweh says to come, let us settle the matter. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. And how can that happen? Yahweh says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land again. Then he will send you rain. That's what it's talking about. The thoughts, the wisdom, the understanding. You think you know something now? Wait until you repent. Until you turn to the Most High Yahweh, how he pours his thoughts to you. Okay? Yahweh sends the rain with the thunderstorms. Remember that. So you will eat the good things of the land. And we're not just, you know, telling you this so that you can think, well, this brother, you know, he just want to be the leader of all this. Because it's not like that. We're all leaders. All of us. Another brother or sister who believe in the same things that I believe in, they're going to tell you the same thing that I'm telling you. So I'm not trying to gas nobody up, you know. I don't want you to think that, hey, all those brothers and sisters that, you know, listen to his videos and are friends with him on Facebook, he has manipulated them. Because that's not true. We have had ups and downs. But through the spirit of the Most High Yahweh, now is the time when Yahweh is really gathering us together with one mindset. Remember, this is the fires of affliction that we're going through. So, we're all going through this together. But it's not so that anybody can remain an enemy with somebody else. It's not so that somebody can 
forever hold a grudge against this brother or sister because they said something or whatever like that. So if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. Just like Yahweh says that in Joshua. If serving Yahweh is undesirable to you, then pick for yourself who you will serve. So you're not forced to follow in the ways of the Most High Yahweh, but people claim to call on the name of Yahweh. You claim to rely on the name of Yahweh. Rather say, this is the reason why this is being revealed to you. This is happening because he's trying to reach out to you. You don't have to take it as a warning. You know, you don't have to take it as this is a message from Yahweh. You know, only you and Yahweh will be able to understand whether this is for you or not. But look what it says here. But if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of Yahweh has spoken. This is in the scriptures right there. Isaiah chapter 35 verse 7. The burning sand will become a pool if you are willing and obedient. It says the thirsty ground bubbling spring. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. And so we already know that in Jeremiah it says, Cursed is the one who trusts in men. And the next verse says, That person will be like a bush in the wastelands. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. Just like Esau's inheritance, Malachi 1 and 3. But Esau I have hated, and I have turned his hill country into a wasteland, and left his inheritance to the desert jackals. Okay? So again, this is why it says in Isaiah 35 and 7, in the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. So let's go ahead and further show you that Yahweh he gave Esau's inheritance to the desert jackals. These are the desert jackals. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 8. I have heard the insults of Moab and the taunts of the Ammonites who insulted my people and made threats against their land. Therefore as surely as I live, declares Yahweh Almighty, the most high of Yasharel, surely Moab will become like Sodom, the Ammonites like Gomorrah, a place of weeds and salt pits, a wasteland forever. The remnant of my people will plunder them. The survivors of my nation will inherit their land. You see that? So it's saying Yahweh's people and as well as the survivors that Yahweh has saved from all nations. Remember when he saved his people out of Egypt? Did he not also save some Egyptians, some from, you know, Kaptor? So this is why, you know, Yahweh says the remnant of his people, they will govern the mountain of Esau. But let's go ahead and take a look at this scripture here in 2 Chronicles chapter 2, verse 23. The Ammonites and Moabites rose up against the men from Mount Seir, which are the people from Esau, to destroy and annihilate them. After they finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. We don't have much time to talk about this here, but when you do your research, you would see that Moab and Edom is talking about Palestine and that land there called Israel. You see that? They were once together and then they split and now they're fighting amongst each other. This is how we know that this is dumb. Okay, so you know, you want to continue to think otherwise, you are free to do that. We're going to go ahead and read Amos chapter 9 verse 11. So it says, In that day I will restore David's fallen shelter. I will repair its broken walls. Remember how it says, A person with a quick temper is like a city with broken walls. And so that's what it's talking about here. It's talking about how Yahweh, he's going to remove, right, the violent people. All these people who have an appetite for violence and bloodshed, the bloodthirsty, and all of these people, he's going to remove them. So this is what it means. I will repair its broken walls and restore its ruins. That's why Yahweh says that he will give you leaders after his own heart. That's how he's going to repair this broken wall. All right. Yahweh says he's going to restore its ruins and will rebuild it as he used to be. So that what? so that they may possess the remnant of Edom. Who's the remnant of Edom? It's talking about Amalek. 
and all the nations that bear my name, declares Yahweh, who will do these things? His people and the survivors from his nation. So that's what's going on now. Who is Edom? These Zionist people. Okay? You want to continue to think it's just the regular white men? Go ahead. But it's talking about these Zionist people. They're the ones who's trying to spread their religion like cancer. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 13. Aparim's jealousy will vanish and Yahweh's enemies will be destroyed. Aparim will not be jealous of Yahweh, nor Yahweh hostile towards Aparim. So, again, this is what's going on right now. You know, the Most High Yahweh, he's trying to repair the broken walls. Yahweh says that there will be a highway there for the righteous. Let's go ahead and read Jeremiah 5 and 24. They do not say to themselves, Let us fear Yahweh our God, who gives autumn and spring rains in season, who assures us of the regular week of harvest. Your wrongdoings have kept these away. Your sins have deprived you of good. Among my people are the wicked who lie in wait like men who snare birds and like those who set traps to catch people. And so that's the reason why, you know, you got to be careful because not every brother is a brother. Not every friend is a friend. There are some people that just want to keep tabs on you so that they can go ahead and just try to, you know, talk trash behind your back and all that other stuff like you know as if it's supposed to matter Isaiah 28 and 12 to whom he said this is the resting place let the worry rest and this is the place of repose but they will not listen instead they want to talk trash behind our backs but that's why they're behind us 